Friends, I normally don't do this and I usually leave politics off my channel, but I felt like today was different. What happened today to Charlie Kirk needs to stop. And I fear and I know that it probably will not. And that is because we live in a sin sick world. Political violence is ridiculous and it is not uncommon in our country for it to happen. I don't know why this one felt different today. I never commented on a Trump ass assassination attempt or uh, a Gabby Giffords, uh, you know, assassination attempt. But I don't know, this one felt different. I didn't always agree with Charlie. I agreed with him on a lot of things, economics and some other things. And we had something in common, which I'll share in a moment. But friends, as followers of Christ, violence is not the answer. Christ never once initiated violence toward another person. Now you might be thinking of him turning over the tables in the temple. That was just merely righteous indignation and he flipped over the goods that were on their tables. He never hurt anyone. He never retaliated or reacted to when they beat him and neither did his disciples. And as disciples of Christ, and as those who are to reflect Christ and to be like him, we are not to do that. We are not to use violence to solve our issues. We are to talk them out, to share ideas. This should be a battle of ideas. And that's what Charlie did. He brought ideas for people to debate against. And that's what he was doing today. And if all of us are going to have open and honest discussions, even though we may disagree, or we, we may we think we disagree between each other, we cannot resort to violence. But friends, since we live in such a sin-sick world, this is not going to stop until Christ's return. I've been a little sad lately with this channel I haven't done my job. My job as a Christian is to tell you about Christ. And my job as a Christian is to tell you about the Word of God, which is God. And I know many of you here are just here for technical information on solar or how to grow grapes. And that's cool, and I love you, and I'm glad you're here, but it is my responsibility to tell people. I don't want anybody saying to me, in the end, when Christ returns, Eric, why didn't you tell us? You knew. So friends, I'm going to start sharing with you some things from God's word that you might not know about and you may have never heard about in your churches. Or if you're not a Christian, you may not have heard about these things either. And I got to tell you, non-Christian friends, I love you. Your creator God loves you too. He wants you to return to him. The Bible says if Christ would have died for just one, he would have done it. What God would condescend and come down and stop being God, come to this earth, become a human to die for you. Muhammad wouldn't do that, although he's not a God. Allah wouldn't do that. Buddha wouldn't do that. Krishna or whatever wouldn't do that. No, nothing else. Nobody else would have done that but Christ. And God loves all even if they do not believe in him. But friends, this violence, it's going to continue. It's going to get worse. Because the closer we are to Christ's coming, the Holy Spirit is withdrawing from the earth. The angels who are holding back the winds of strife on the four corners of the earth are letting them loose. And they will be loosed fully right before Christ's return. I beg you to get to know Christ, to get to know him through his word. Don't listen to preachers, investigate for yourself, but I want you to investigate some certain topics in the Bible. One of those is the state of the dead and where Charlie is right now and where my father who died in 92 is right now. I want you to investigate how detrimental spiritualism is and all the fallen angels here on this earth, how they can manipulate things, including your dead loved ones or aliens or other things. Satan is powerful and he is here on earth prowling around like a lion 
to destroy you and me because he hates us. We're created in God's image and he wants worship, but we need to worship our creator God. I'll talk about the mark of the beast and what that is. And if you read in Revelation, it is about worship. I'm going to talk about the Sabbath and Charlie Kirk was a seventh day Sabbath keeper. And we'll talk about that more. And I became one myself. We'll talk about why I think that's important and why through biblical study, it was never changed. And we'll also talk about the sanctuary. So that sanctuary that Moses built with God's instruction was a copy of what was in heaven and what exists currently in heaven. And that's where Christ is. And he is interceding for us and for our sins currently. No other entity is doing that. No other entity can do that but Christ. So I implore you, friends, have respectful discussions with your friends and with those you don't agree with about topics that are difficult to talk about, like the ones I just mentioned. And friends, politics are not something that God talks about because God's government of love is the only government that means anything. And God is very specific about what he expects from us. And the word love has been twisted and twisted. And the only way you're going to know what true love is, is by reading and studying his word. Friends, one political party says it's aligned with God. The other political party says it's aligned with love, which is God. <sighs> They're both not. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's why I don't subscribe to either. I have certain views and they align with biblical teaching. And it's not my interpretation of biblical teaching. It's not somebody else's interpretation of biblical teaching. I've been on this journey for 30 years and it's about what the straight testimony of God says. It's easy to understand if you invite the Holy Spirit in your heart. Now, I prayed for Charlie earlier that he would make it and uh, God wanted him to go to sleep at this point. I pray for his family, his children, his wife. I can't imagine what they are going through right now. It is absolutely heart-wrenching. And friends, actually, I've got some quotes from a couple people here. One from either side of the political aisle. And I'm going to read them because I thought they summed things up really well. One is from Thomas Massey, who is a libertarian conservative. He says, my heart is broken for Charlie Kirk and my prayers are with his family and friends. Our country was founded on principles of free speech and open political discourse. Nothing justifies violence against any voice on the left or right of today's debates. That's the first one. Let me find the second one, which is from somebody who didn't agree with Charlie. Her name is Anya, and she's got a check mark on Twitter. I don't exactly know who she is, but she is a, uh, a liberal or Democrat. This is a dark day in the history of our country. You don't have to believe in what Charlie Cook stood for to mourn the, his death and recognize that political assassination is abhorrent. At the end of the day, Charlie was a husband and a father. My heart breaks for his family. No one deserves to be executed for their politics. That happens in third world countries, friends, not ours. And for the record, one's compassion for their fellow human should not be conditional. My empathy for the Kirk family is not contingent on whether Charlie shared my views or even grieve for the same victims of violence as I did. In matters of life and death, we must show mercy and humanity. Now, yes, I agree that there is one side who tends to use violence for politics more and they should be jailed for a long time for that. Now, I'm going to say one more thing that you may or may not agree with. And I changed my view on this back in 2007. And I changed my view on this because I felt that I was being hypocritical because I believe in life at conception. And a baby becomes a baby instantly, that sperm, when that sperm hits that egg. So the thing I changed my view on was the death penalty. And if and when they catch the person 
who shot and killed Charlie, I do not want them to receive it. And here's why. Everyone is a child of God, whether you believe it or not. Everyone has a chance to turn their life around, even up to the last minute, like the thief on the cross. If I believe in not killing unborn life at conception and through pregnancy, I cannot believe in the death penalty because that person still has a chance. Up until the moment they die, they can turn their life to Christ, repent and turn away from sin. I know some people are celebrating Charlie's death. I think that's abhorrent, disgusting, but I pray for them. I pray that they change their hearts and see the humanity in everybody. That's all I can pray for, that they turn their life around, as well as those who try to kill others for their political or religious views because that's happening too christians are persecuted all over the world killed syria north korea china they're jailed beaten just because i don't know why but christ was he was beaten for us he suffered for us as did the disciples as did the reformers who went against the church of the time, who was teaching wrong things, who was killing people, calling them heretics and killing them, burning them at the stake. The Inquisition and chasing the Waldensians into the mountains, killing them if they found a Bible verse on them. But friends, it will happen again. It's prophesied. It's in God's word. So he said it. It will happen. Revelation, those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus, will be sought, killed, thrown in jail, persecuted. If we're truly to obey God's word, we must expect that and prepare for it. Well, that's it, friends. I could go on for a long time. Pretty dark day. But look up to Christ. Smile. Ask him for help, for comfort, as I ask it, and all of us should ask it for Charlie's family. I love you all. Have a beautiful, blessed day. I'll see you next time.